Maybe you can't tell by my appearance, but I'm actually not a Boston native. However, I do realize the cultural significance that baseball has in Boston, which is why we're outside of Fenway, about to get a tour of this famous ballpark. You guys are sitting in the oldest ballpark in the country. As we mentioned downstairs, 1912 when we started playing here, 97 years ago. So we are, in fact, the oldest ballpark in the major leagues. Over the course of the last seven off seasons, a lot of major work has gone on. 2003 to 2009, we've increased capacity by a little over 6,000, bringing us to today right below 40,000. I think it's pretty crazy to see this entire ballpark completely empty right now. The only on-field memorial in Major League Baseball we've got on the Green Monster. A lot of people don't know about it's uh, International Morris Code. Underneath where it says American League, uh, there's a bunch of dots and dashes on a solid white line. It stands for T-A-Y, Thomas Austin Yankee. A little bit next to him, J-R-Y, Jim Remington Yankee, his wife. Uh, they're the people that built the wall in 1934. I'm learning a lot about baseball right now, um, and it's a really great place for students to come because it's only $12. You learn a lot about sports culture. All the red flags up there for World Series championships. So we've got seven of those. Two more recent that you guys know about, 2004 and 2007. Only team with two, uh, two World Series victories in this millennium. So pretty cool to be able to say that. From Fenway to the Back Bay, let's take it over to Cafe 939. To me, music is a huge part of culture, and from what I understand, Cafe 939 is the place to be. It's a Berkeley-run venue and coffee house that hosts bands both locally and nationally, and it's right here in the Back Bay. It's a cheap and chill way to just come, hang out, and listen to new music. Cafe 939 opened up about a year ago. Well, it's an all-ages venue. I've seen some real little ones, and I've seen their parents and their grandparents. On the national level, we get a lot of the singer-songwriters. So we get all the hotel cafe people. We get the whole 10 out of 10 tour. We get them collectively, and then they come back singly. We give great hospitality. We take really good care of the production and the lights. The room is gorgeous. You might be in a room one night and watching the next John Mayer, the next Melissa Etheridge, the next Click Five. We had Cage the Elephant before anybody in the city did. We had Owl City. We get a lot of requests. I'm talking hundreds of requests a week, as do all the other music venues in Boston. We get them locally. We get them from all the, age, the bigger agencies. Um, we get them from students. A lot of them, you know, they spend their life on the road traveling. They're not new to playing out. So they're, they're seasoned veterans in a way. So they give good show. It's awesome. They'll, they'll come here first and then they're too big to play here and they go to the paradise or they go to Casa Blues. But we've had them first. So that's kind of cool. So from everything Jackie said and spending some time here, it seems like a really awesome place for students to come and just hang out. And I know you'll definitely see me back here. So thanks for watching. I'm Marina Zofchek, hearing culture shock on every block. I'm